Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I have a kind of epic book haul for you. Lot of books to cover from a lot of different categories this month. A lot of pretty exciting stuff and I'm gonna start with the thing that I'm probably most excited about. Simon Teen reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in a review copy of this book and I was like yes please. Have I already pre-ordered it? Yes but please send it to me. It is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambury. I'm so excited for this. So Lizelle is actually an author tuber here on YouTube. I met her in person at BookNet Fest a couple years back. She's lovely. I love her content and I was thrilled to have the opportunity to review this early. It is her debut YA novel coming out through Simon Teen in June. And it, I mean, just like look at it. It looks beautiful. The premise is super cool. It follows a teen girl who comes from a family of witches, but to become a full witch, you have to to complete a task and the task that she's assigned is to kill her first love. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. D did I mention that she also recently announced she sold a horror novel? Like am I surprised? No, but I'm really here for it. So I'm really excited for this. Congratulations to Lizelle. Definitely go check this out. I'm really, really happy for her. So thank you, Simon Teen. Next, I have a YA title from Onway Press. They also reached out to me and I was like, yeah, this sounds great. Send it along. Onway is a small press based in the UK that focuses on publishing books by marginalized authors. This book is Dream Country by Ashaya Brown. They sent me an art copy and here is the beautiful final cover. It is a YA fantasy. It says, a sibling rivalry to fuel your worst nightmares. Triplet gods of sleep, dreams, and nightmares. Suspects in their own mother's murder. Separated by deadly gates of horn and ivory. But what happens when the gates collapse? Um, so yeah, this sounded really interesting. Thank you so much to them for sending along a copy. I am going to be reading this in April and it does come out, I think like April 24th or 27th, sometime in that week in late April. So go check it out. Then I have a couple of kids books that arrived, which has been fun. One is from Macmillan Kids. They sent me this really great picture book that I honestly has been a huge hit with my kids. Like I kept trying to keep it in here for my book haul and they were like, mom, why do you have that book? Give it to us. And I was like, no, I need it for a video. No, it's our book. And so I snuck it for the video. So <laughs> this is Cars, Signs, and Porcupines by Ethan Long. It's pretty cute and it's part of this whole series of books in the Happy County series. There's lots of like funny things. It teaches about roads and road signs and stuff but like the big hit is there's a bunch of porcupines who escape and so they try to like find like where are all of the porcupines? Where are they hiding? How many are there? Uh, so yeah that's been really fun. If you have little ones you could check them out. They also have a Hello World, Sun and Moon Together. They've got like a whole collection of these. So thank you to Macmillan Kids. My children have been enjoying this. I will now put it back on their bookshelf or they will be sad. The other children's book came from Quirk Books and this is one that I've been slowly reading through with my kids and it's also been really cool. I love this whole series. I think they're awesome. We had actually purchased one previously and so when they offered this I was like yes send it to me. This is Kid Innovators True Tales of Childhood from Inventors and Trailblazers by Robin Stevenson illustrations by Allison Steinfeld. So there's a whole series of these books. They've got like okay like kid presidents, kid athletes, kid artists, kid authors, kid scientists. I think we have the kid scientists one, they've got an activist one, um, but this is about innovators. And one thing that I really love about it is that it focuses on a variety of different people, people from different racial and ethnic backgrounds, women, men, people that you know about, people you don't maybe don't know as much about, and even reading it as an adult has been really interesting. I've learned quite a bit. It's a collection of brief biographies of all of these different figures that starts by talking about them as children and then gets a little bit into their achievements as grown-ups. And it's really cool. I mean, even just you can see from some of the ones on the cover here, Walt Disney, Reshma Sajani, Steve Jobs, Florence Nightingale, Jack Cousteau, Madam C.J. Walker, Alan Turing, Alvin Ailey. Um, yeah, I just think these are really nice. We're almost halfway through reading it to the kids. Like they, their attention spans, because they're pretty, mine are pretty young. Um, so like, we definitely can't do more than one at a time, but they've been really good. So thank you so much to Quirk Books. Also, you can tell it's not been sitting on my shelf because it's like already kind of dirty. 
<laughs> it's fine. We're reading it. We're enjoying it. Thank you, Quirk Books. Then this month I had two books come in from Harlequin, from the Harlequin publicity team for promotion on Instagram. First up is this beauty. It is The Marriage He Demands by Brenda Jackson. It's one of the Harlequin desire lines. And this one features a marriage of convenience with a cowboy, which sounds great. Then for one of the most adorable covers I've seen this year, we have Knit Pearl, A Baby and a Girl by Hetty Bell. I had so much fun taking a picture of this for like the Instagram promotion part. I just think it's adorable. I mean, a knitting romance. How cute is that? It features a bisexual heroine who unexpectedly gets pregnant and decides to keep the baby and parent alone when she meets a girl what can one do when one finds love. So this sounds super cute. Thank you so much to Harlequin for both of those. Next is an indie title that hopefully by the time you guys are watching this video I will have already read because it is on my list of things to do this week. This is Isoldes by Kimberly Grimes. It is her debut YA sci-fi fantasy crossover and it looks really great. It's got a diverse cast of characters. The premise sounds really interesting. It says friendships are tested, new alliances are made, and the truth of one woman's actions from over a millennia ago are revealed. This is the first book in a duology. It is multi-POV and she says that it's sci-fi with elements of fantasy, mystery, adventure, and light romance. So a little bit of everything. This author also very kindly sent me a whole bunch of goodies which she did not have to do like pins and buttons and stickers and stuff. A lot of it has to do with the characters in the book but she also sent me stuff with like my lo channel logo and stuff for a couple of my favorite books. Very very kind. Maybe I'll insert a couple of pictures of some of it. But I did want to show you guys these are kind of cool character art cards and I love the character art. This is not even all of the characters but we have Gemma, Megan, Kenna, and Ulyssa. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Thank you so much to Kimberly for sending that along and sending everything. Hopefully we'll be talking about this in my March wrap-up. Okay we're gonna talk about the very final books were, that were sent to me this month but these were sent to me by Penguin Teen. I have Fireborn by Rosaria Munda and Flamefall by Rosaria Munda. This is the new paperback with the cover change and the brand new sequel that just came out. I did a sponsored video with them where I did a reading vlog reading all these books about dragons. If you haven't seen that yet I'll link it up above. I had a lot of fun filming it. I've now read Fireborn and it's so good. I had a copy with the original cover already on my TBR which is part of why I said yes because I had a feeling I was gonna love it. I was very into it. This is definitely fantasy that focuses on politics and feelings. It's more character and politically driven but it also has really cool dragon stuff like riding dragons, mentally linking with dragons. It's it's pretty awesome. I really liked it a lot. I've not read Flamefall yet, but I am looking forward to it, especially with how this book ends. So thank you so much to Penguin Teen for sending those. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to other books. I did receive one gift this month. I actually, it's funny, I think she literally ordered this during our Blades and Bodice Rippers live show. My dear friend Amanda from The Naughty Librarian sent me a copy of Lux Beginnings by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a bind up of Obsidian and Onyx, which are the first two books in the Lux series. This is YA sci-fi romance with aliens, and I had read one of the later spin-off books and really enjoyed it. Um, it's like very soapy and fun melodrama, and she was like, like, I think you'll really like it. I'm gonna send this to you. I think it was literally during the live show she ordered it. So thank you, Amanda. I'm very happy to have this and I do have some plans for reading it pretty soon. So uh, yeah, that was very kind of her. Then I have a stack of books that I bought for videos or book clubs that I'm a part of. First up, if you haven't seen it yet, I recently put up a video where I read all of Mara from Books Like Woe's favorite books. And for that video, I bought The Obsession by Nora Roberts, which is a romantic suspense. Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie, and a new favorite book as well as one of the most beautiful books I now have on my shelves, The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. This is a dark collection of fairy tale retellings that are really interesting and like is this not beautiful? It's a UK special edition and like the end papers. This is this book is so pretty. I love it a lot. Books I've picked up for like book clubs and read-alongs. I have Her Land, Her Love by Evangeline Parsons Yazzie. This is a historical romance by a Navajo author and it's one of the books we're going to be reading for the Indigenous Romance read-along. Then an upcoming pick for the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club. I have Shadow and Claw by Jean Wolfe. I think this is actually a bind up of the first two volumes of this 
award-winning classic modern classic fantasy trilogy. I know nothing about this. Leanna picked it, so we'll see. Um, I have that. And then lastly, while I was filming that dragon vlog, I went to a bookstore and I picked up Exhalation by Ted Chiang. This is a collection of sci-fi short stories. I have not read from Ted Chiang, but I've heard really fantastic things about him and have been meaning to read something by him, so I decided to grab myself a copy of Exhalation. Okay, so those are all of the books that I bought for projects. Next I'm going to show you my pre-orders and then lastly other random books that I picked up. First up I have some new installments in my Penguin Vitae collection. I don't buy all of them because they're a, they're a little pricey but they're also really beautiful. It's a new collection of modern American classics and they've been featuring a lot of BIPOC authors as well which I think is really cool. So uh, this, this is slightly excessive but I have four titles. <laughs> I got this month. Technically two of them came in at the like the last week of February and then two of them came in in March but like because of when I filmed my last one I have four. It's it's fine. Uh, first up we have We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I have been wanting to read from Shirley Jackson and I think I actually already have another copy of this on my TBR but now I have this really beautiful edition. She's kind of known as a classic of like gothic horror kind of psychological horror, so I want to read more from her. I also have The Soul of Black Folk by W.E.B. Du Bois. This is a classic of black nonfiction that I've heard great things about. I want to read from him this year. Also, a book that sounded really interesting is Not Without Laughing by Langston Hughes. So Langston Hughes is mostly known for his poetry during the Harlem Renaissance. However, he apparently also wrote a novel, and it sounds really good. This is like a coming-of-age story. I'm excited to check it out. And then the last installment for this collection is Winter in the Blood by James Welch. This is a bit of a darker book but it's not super long and it's a modern classic by an indigenous author. So I'm really pleased to have these. All of these are so pretty and I'm glad to have them on my shelves. All right two more pre-orders to talk about. First the second book in a duology where I really really loved book one. This is A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. This is the sequel to A Memory Called Empire. It's a very character and politics driven space opera and I was really into book one. <laughs> this is one that I, I shamefully have still not read but it's my next audiobook that I'm planning on picking up and I'm going to do a blended read with the physical book but I knew I was going to want to own this so I did pre-order it. Then of course my final pre-order for the month because I am kind of trash for the Shadowhunter universe. We have Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, book two in the Last Hour series. I know, I know she is not everybody's cup of tea but I've been a longtime fan and I have really been loving these books. Also this cover is stunning. In person it's even prettier than I think I even realized it was going to be and what's kind of fun is because I paid extra to go to like a virtual event for it, it's signed and came with a beautiful moth pin which I love. I actually, yeah, I, I will, I would like legitimately use this so really excited to have that. Next I have two books that I picked up when I went on a date with my husband. We had kind of a belated Valentine's celebration because our babysitter got sick on Valentine's Day so we had to like put off our date. So I probably actually got these at the very end of February but again I had already filmed my haul but again I'd already filmed my haul for the month so it wasn't included there. We had a really lovely time. We had brunch then we walked and had good conversation and went to Barnes and Noble and of course I bought a couple of books and uh, these are books that had been kind of on my radar for a while and I decided to go ahead and go ahead and grab them. First up is a book that I, I kind of just want to read so I can have an opinion on it and that is Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. <laughs> Yeah, so the day after I filmed this book haul, um, some things happened that made me decide I will be unhauling Gardens of the Moon, which I literally just bought because Steven Erickson has been engaging in some very inappropriate behavior as an author that has affected people I personally know. I will have a video addressing this and other authors that have kind of crossed the line for me where I'm no longer interested in reading their books. This is one of them. So sadly, I'm going to be unhauling this. And then the other thing I picked up is a book that I saw so many people raving about last year and have, it's also just beautiful. This is Elatsaway by Darcy Little Badger. Look 
how beautiful. This book is stunning and under the cover it's also beautiful. <laughs> I've been wanting this for a while. It's a debut YA novel from an indigenous author that's fantasy but set in our modern world so I don't know if I would quite call it magical realism but I know there's magical elements but set in our actual world. The other cool thing about this is the main character I believe is Arrow Ace so aromantic asexual and that's cool because not something you see in YA all the time. Like frequently in YA books you're going to get a romance plot and so I like the fact that there's something where that's not what it's about. So happy to have this on my TBR. Then I have two books that I read as eARCs, wanted physical copies of and have been waiting for them to go on sale and they did. And then I have two books that I bought because of other YouTubers. So <laughs> the books I've already read that went on sale. We have Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna McGuire. This is the latest book in the Wayward Children series. I'm collecting all of them. They're down right down here and I love them a lot. I gave five stars to this book. I knew I wanted it. I was just waiting for the price to drop. And then I also got a copy of Ring Shout by Pete Jelly Clark. This was one of the best horror novels that I read last year. It's a really smart novella. It's kind of a weird genre blend of like horror and historical fantasy. It was great. I didn't own anything by P. Jelly Clark and I was like I really need to have something from him on my shelves. So picked both of those up. Then after doing a podcast episode with Audrey from Perpetual Pages and Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book where we talked about underrated science fiction and fantasy, both of them were raving about this book that had already been on my radar and that just nudged me to finally say okay I need to grab something from this author. So I have Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. I hear that this has a lot of political stuff in it which I really like in my science fiction. They were both raving about this series and so I do really want to try it. So I got the first book. So the next little set of books I'm excited because I finally was able to go and sell some books to my local indie bookstore in exchange for store credit and I got $60 in store credit which was very exciting. So of course I used it to buy some books. So briefly I'm going to show you what I picked up for that. One thing that I like about the Strand is they sell new and used books so sometimes you can get a discounted price. First I grabbed A Hero Born by Jin Yong which I'm excited because it's on my list of books that I wanted to read in 2021. This is a modern classic of Chinese fantasy and I found a used half price copy for $15. Then probably the most exciting thing I was thrilled. Some of you might know that I'm a huge fan of The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. It's one of my all-time favorite books and I have been wanting to maybe eventually find a first edition with the like original cover. I found one. <laughs> I was like oh my goodness I mean we're, we're not going to talk about the condition the actual book is in it's fine but I have the original cover it was also $15 probably because it's not in great condition but it's the first edition first printing and I am thrilled to add this to my name of the wind collection. Then a book I've been meaning to pick up for a while and a series I've been meaning to continue with is uh, this one from Becky Chambers. I got A Closed and Common Orbit which is the sequel to A Long Way to a Small Anchored Planet. She writes wonderful character driven soft sci-fi that is just really happy and feel good and I kind of love it so happy to have that. And then finally you might notice a pattern over the last several months I've been slowly collecting some books that were childhood favorites for me so perhaps eventually a video may be coming um, but I grabbed a copy of The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. I remember reading this in fifth grade and I really loved it. It's about this odd billionaire or millionaire or something who loved games and he gathers all these people together including maybe a murderer for games to decide who's going to inherit his money after he dies and uh, I remember really loving it when I was in school. And then finally this month I bought one book because of Mara over at Books Like Woe. <laughs> like who's surprised? I buy, a, I, buy, I buy a good number of books because of her. This is The Bachelor Cowboy by Jessica Clare. Okay so Mara has this theory that Jessica Clare is also Ruby Dixon and I've really been enjoying Ruby Dixon's sci-fi romance and so she was like I think you would like this. It's a contemporary but it's got like a similar vibe to it so I'm trusting her and uh, I have this as well. There you have it. Those are all of the books that have come into my collection in the month of March. It is kind of a lot of books and I, I feel like every time I do a haul video I get questions about where I keep all of my books. So maybe at some, maybe at some point I'll actually do a video tour of this because I haven't done one in a while. 
But for those of you who are wondering, let me just give you a, a brief overview. First of all, I am super picky about what stays in my permanent collection. If I don't love something or don't think I'm gonna reference it for a lot of videos, I will unhaul it. I will sell books back to my indie bookstore in exchange for store credit like I did earlier. I will pass books along to friends. I will donate them to a nonprofit bookstore near me. Um, so I'm very picky about what actually stays on my shelves but I also do have kind of a lot of bookshelves. I have the one you see behind me. I have one right here where I keep all of my romance titles. I have a small bookshelf in my closet where I have my most of my mass market paperbacks that are not romance. Then in the living room I've got two big tall bookshelves as well as an entertainment system for the TV that has some bookshelves on it and on top of it. So I mean, I do have kind of a lot of shelf space. However, it's not unlimited because we live in a, an apartment in Manhattan. So uh, yeah, this is why I'm picky about what stays in my permanent collection. And I do unhaul books pretty regularly, even if I don't talk about them here. So there you go. I'm not gonna say this in every haul, but the last haul I did, I got a lot of questions. And there are definitely people who are newer to the channel. So hopefully that helps answer any of the questions you might have. There are bigger conversations to be had about it, but for now, I think that'll do the trick. All right, um, with that said, Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in the video today. And for question of the day, um, you know what? Why don't you tell me about how you decide what stays on your shelves? Do you keep everything you read? Do you keep everything you buy? Do you unhaul books? Do you have some like way of making that determination? Let me know in the comments down below. Everybody's definitely different on this. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked down below, or check out channel memberships if you just want to get a sneak peek at all of my upcoming video projects. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.